everyone, welcome back to my channel. Um, today I'm going to explain how I create a digital interactive notebook for my students in Google Classroom. So first things first, I know a lot of people have heard about interactive notebooks. Um, basically you have a composition book that all of your students will have individually and they use that throughout the school year to take notes, to do activities, lessons, things of that nature. And basically it's just a book where everything is held, everything important is kept that you guys have learned throughout the school year. So when the pandemic happened, I had to figure out how to basically move everything online. And so I have found how to create a digital interactive notebook. Um, luckily from other teacher YouTubers, I have to shout out my coworker, Mr. Surgeon, who basically sent me the initial link that gave me the idea and the initial how-to methods of creating the digital interactive notebook. Um, so thank you, Mr. Surgeon. That's what teacher life is all about, sharing is caring, right? Um, but nonetheless, in this video, I'm gonna talk about how I create it in the first place, how I make sure my students can't delete any important information from the actual notebook itself, and also how how I implement it in Google Classroom. So if you are interested in the digital interactive notebook that I create for my students weekly and bi-weekly, make sure you keep watching. All right guys, so first things first, you're going to create a blank Google slide presentation. Just a blank Google slide. You don't have to add a layout or anything like that or a background. We'll take care of that in a few seconds. So the most important thing is click view and then click master. We are going to create most of the interactive notebook pages in the master view. As a matter of fact, we're gonna create all of them in the master view. By doing this, students won't be able to delete or move things around within their interactive notebook. So for example, um, when I give them instructions on how to do an activity or important notes, they won't be able to you know, revise or move things around. So next I'm going to search for an image of a notebook cover. Um, I know on my first interactive notebook that I created, it actually had tabs. Um, for this one, I'm gonna keep it very simple and just use a um, lime green notebook cover. This week is gonna be pretty short because it's Labor Day weekend and um, the students are out on Monday. So this notebook is gonna be sweet, and simple and short so yeah I'm just gonna make that the background um, there's a different ways you can do this but I'm just gonna copy and paste the image of the notebook and make it the background of the very first slide in master view next you will see me basically adding a text box or a shape so that I can add the title to the notebook cover so I'm just gonna add a shape and I'm gonna change the background of the shape so that the letters will show up and I'm just gonna title the notebook Interactive Notebook Week 4. And since we are still on the jumping tree, I'm going to also add the title of the story we're on, the jumping tree, so that students can easily determine what topic their interactive notebook is focusing on when they look for them in Google Classroom. <music> So right here, you're gonna see me add a text box so that students will be able to add their names and class periods. Like I said, students won't be able to actually click on this box and add their actual names until I leave out of master view and add another text box when it is in regular view. But I will um, basically explain that in a few minutes once we are done with everything in master view. Okay, so I am done with the cover of this interactive notebook. I'm gonna go ahead and move on to page two. All right, so in the master view, basically it serves as a template for different layouts you can use throughout your Google Slides. We're going to go ahead and delete the layout and make it blank again. So a lot of teachers, what they'll do in their digital interactive notebooks is basically Google search pictures of notebook paper and make them the background of the notebook pages in their interactive notebooks. I'm not gonna do that this week because my students are gonna be utilizing several graphic organizers, um, but I have done that in my previous interactive notebooks. It's a really cool way to get the kids into the feeling of this is an actual notebook. 
So on this page, I'm going to create a template for my students to use um, to basically complete a character web for the character Ray from the jumping tree. I'm gonna add different text boxes and shapes to create the character web and basically um, change the color so that it'll be a little bit more engaging for my students. I'm also gonna make sure to include instructions for the character web at the top of the page so that students will know exactly what to do in this particular activity. By the way, I sped that last part up. I do not typically work that fast. I'm not there yet. So here is my finished product of the character web on page two. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and move to page three. Again, I'm going to delete the layout basically that is provided in the master view and I'm left with another blank page. So on page three, I'm basically creating the template for a Venn diagram I want my students to use to compare and contrast two characters we've read about this week. When you are creating a Venn diagram on Google Slides, all you have to do is insert two shapes of um, two circles and make them transparent and overlap. And there you go, a Venn diagram template. And I'll show you how to insert other text boxes so students can actually go in and input the information. And so here's the final product of the Venn diagram. I went ahead and changed the background color again to make it a little bit more engaging for my students. So on the very last page of the interactive notebook, I'm just creating another template for um, the last activity I want my students to complete. Basically, they will compare the themes of two stories. And here you can just see me adding text boxes and instructions and changing the colors, things of that nature. Okay, so once you've completed all of the notebook pages in your interactive notebook, you will exit out of master view and go into regular view. So once you're in regular view, you will go ahead and click the slide button and create new slide. So as you can see, all of the slides you're adding look exactly like the second slide in your master view template, and that is perfectly fine. Remember, when we create slides in the master view, it creates a new layout. So what you'll have to do is click on the particular slide that you want to change, click layout, and then you will see all of the slides we created for our interactive notebook while we were in master view. So all you have to do is click on the particular slide you're working on, click layout, and then click on the slide that you created in your interactive notebook or in the interactive notebook while you were in master view. So one of the last steps of creating your interactive notebook is basically adding text boxes for our students so that they can go in and add their information and answers to the questions. So basically you will just press insert text box and you will draw a text box over the spaces you left when you created the templates in the master view.
Okay, so here's the final product of my interactive notebook for week five for my students. Again, I like for my interactive notebooks to be a week or two weeks long versus making a semester long or year long interactive notebook because if something comes up, if I need to change or revise anything, I can't really go back in and change all of my students' interactive notebooks if I've made a copy for each of them in Google Classroom. So I strongly suggest only making them a week or two weeks long. Last but not least, when you assign your interactive notebooks to your students in Google Classroom, make sure you make a copy for each student. All right guys, I really hope this video was super helpful for you all. Please make sure you subscribe to my channel so you can see more teacher videos from me. And also make sure you follow me on Instagram at Middle Days Mari. See ya.